Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. Now, in my video on Bayesian theorem, I hinted at an enrichment or enhancement of affine geometry called projective geometry. And in this video, I want to introduce the topic of projective geometry, focusing on the projective line here. Okay, to set things up, we need to start with a field, which I'll denote with this double barrel F. And we want to have a look firstly at affine n plus 1 space. So it's usually denoted like this. And it just means the set of all n plus 1 tuples uh, with entries inside this field F. And once we have this, it's very easy to define what projective n space is over this field F. At least it's easy to define as a set. So what's that? So this projective n space, denoted P n F, is just a set of all lines inside this affine n plus 1 space, which pass through the point 0. Technically, this definition of projective n space is the differential geometers version, as opposed to the algebraic geometers version, but they're equivalent, and this is the one that you usually first see. So we'll use this one here. Okay, so the... One way to interpret this set of lines inside here, since they pass through zero, is that they're just the one-dimensional subspaces of this vector space here. Okay, so there are two remarks that I should make before we go on. So the first one is that I chose this point zero. If I chose a different point, I could translate all these lines by that different point, and that will give a similar looking set of lines. And so we could have taken that to be our definition of projective end space. So this was just a, a choice. We could have changed it if we liked. It would have, have made any real difference. But one thing it means uh, having this choice is that we can view these lines as one dimensional subspaces instead. So the second thing is, well, why might you be interested in such a set? Well, if you go back to that video on Bayesian theorem, one of the things that you would have noticed is that we were interested in looking at spaces of curves inside the plane. So you wanted to see a set of lines, a set of conics, a set of curves, and you wanted some sort of geometry on that. So it turns out that rather than looking at all lines, it's quite natural to look at all lines going through a fixed point, and that's in some ways a more fundamental object. So that's why we're interested in something like that. And that very quickly describes for us this set. So of course, of course, the question now remains, what type of geometry, though, do we put on this set? And what I want to do now is show you how we put the geometry in the simplest case where n equals 1. And that's P1, which is the projective line. And the basic idea is that we're going to use that manifold approach. So let's just remind ourselves what that means. Basically, what we'll do is we'll define the geometry on, the, on this projective line locally first on open sets. And then we'll glue these geometries together. Okay, so let's see how that works. Okay, so when n equals 1, of course you want to look at affine n plus 1 space, so that's the affine plane. n plus 1 is 2. So here we have xy plane here. And remember the projective line is just the set of all lines going through this point 0. It's the set of all those lines going through 0. And what I want to do is I want to identify a large part of this set of lines with just the affine line we call an x and where y equals 1. Okay, so that's this line here. Okay, so how do we do that? How do I identify a, an open subset of this projective line with this affine line here? Well, we do it by introducing this function phi x from a1x to p1. And what it does is it maps the point x, which corresponds to the point here, x1, since we're looking at the line where y equals 1. 
And I need to give you a point inside here, which is a line which goes through 0. And which line will that be? It's just a line that goes through x1 and, of course, 0. Okay? It's simple enough. So x, the point on the affine line, gets mapped to this line here, which is a point on this projective line. Now, of course, phi x is injective. Why is that? If you change this point around, of course, you do actually move this line. So you get a different line if you change the point of this line here. So it's injective. So that means that you can identify this affine line with its image inside here. OK. Well, let's give the image a name. Let's call it ux. And let's think, what is the image? OK, so what subset of this projective line is it? So in other words, which lines do we get? OK, so these are lines which join 0 to a point on this line here. So this line has to intersect this line here. So the only way you can have a line through here which doesn't intersect this line, of course, is if it's parallel to this line. So you get the subset of all lines going through 0, which are not parallel to this line y equals 1. And of course, the only one of that form is the one that's the x-axis here, where y equals 0. So that means that you get Every, the image of this is every point in here. Okay, so remember the points here are lines. It's every line in here except for the point corresponding to the line y equals 0. Okay. Now, if you go back to that video on Bezu's theorem, you might remember that I talked about the projective line as adding a point to the affine line. So that's what we see here. This is almost the same as this. It's got an extra point, the point corresponding to the line y equals 0, and that's a point at infinity of this line here. OK, so that tells you about this part of this projective line, and now we can actually put some geometry there. OK, and the way we'll do that is we're just going to identify this subset of P1, this subset ux, with a1. In other words, the geometry on this subset ux is just going to be equal to the geometry on, in a1x, the affine line. Okay, so what does that mean, the geometry on a1x? Well, actually, that depends on, firstly, the field, and secondly, how you want to look at this projective line. For example, if f is algebraically closed, then one thing we know is that this affine line is an algebraic variety. So we can think of this as a variety. And the geometry on here is as a variety. If, on the other hand, the field F is the real numbers, then this A1x, that's just a real number line, which is a real manifold. So we can think of this as a real manifold. What happens if the field F is the complex numbers? Well, firstly, it's algebraically closed, so you can think of this as an algebraic variety. But you can also think of A1C as a complex manifold. So in that case, this has the structure of a complex manifold. And it's up to you to decide whether you want to view this geometry here as a complex manifold or as a variety. And you do that as the case uh, may be. Finally, what happens if f is arbitrary, so it's not any of those mentioned? Well, at the very least, this is a scheme. So what you can do is you can think of the geometry on ux as a scheme. So this equation here allows us to define the geometry in a neighborhood of every point of P1, except at this point at infinity corresponding to the line y equals 0 here. So how do we define the geometry in the neighborhood of that point corresponding to this line here? Well, what we do is now, instead of using the line y equals 1, 
we're going to look at the line x equals 1. And we can do a similar thing and identify the affine line where x equals 1 with coordinate y with an open part of the projective line. And we have a similar procedure. We just map y to the line through, in this case, x equals 1. So it's the line through 0, 0 and 1, y. And similarly, this map is going to be injective. As you move this point up and down here, you get a different line, so a different point in the projective line. So you can identify this affine line with its image inside here. We'll call that image ui, and then we just make the geometry on ui equal to the geometry on this affine line here. And the key point is now that we've defined the geometry everywhere, because the projective line is the union of these two subsets. Okay. In fact, this projective line is just ux plus the point at infinity. And how do we know that the point at infinity is here? Does it correspond to the image of something here? Yes. Uh, the point at infinity was this line here, which is the line through 0 and 1, 0. So now we've identified the geometry everywhere, but there are some things that we need to check. So when you think about manifold theory, there are two ways to think about it. Either we can think about looking at the geometry here locally, and then you have to ask, well, I could have used the geometry here or the geometry here. Are they compatible with each other? The other way of thinking about geometry and manifold theory is you can try to construct this by taking the disjoint union of ux and uy, so you consider these as two separate lines now, and you want to now glue them together where they overlap. Of course, the two procedures are equivalent, and let's just see how that works. So the gluing goes as follows. We're going to put a, pick a point x inside here, the affine line with coordinate x, uh, which is non-zero. So they correspond to the point on this line here, except for this one here. And what's the corresponding point in the projective line? So there are all the lines through those points, but you don't have this one here. Okay, You don't have this one here because we didn't allow x equals 0. Now, of course, the one where x equals 0 doesn't correspond to a point on this other affine line. So once you have that, Point X, the corresponding point of that projective line, is this line here. And now we want to think of that as being inside the other affine line with coordinate Y. So that corresponds to the other point here. And what's the coordinate of that? Well, the X coordinate, of course, has to be 1. And to get the other coordinate, you just look and see what the slope of this is, which is 1 over x. So that means that this y coordinate has to be 1 over x. So x on this affine line a1x, when you sit it inside the projective line, which is this one here, corresponds precisely to this point y equals 1 on x on this other affine line this one here. So the way we identify and glue these two copies of uh, affine lines together is we identify x inside here with y equals 1 on x. Okay, so if you want to use the gluing analogy a little bit further, it's easiest to look in the case where the field is the reals, and the picture of the reals looks as follows. So firstly, we have a1x is the real number line, and up to homeomorphism, we can write it like this. It's almost the circle minus a single point. So what we'll have here is that we think of this as x equals 0, and then as you go towards infinity, plus and minus infinity, you go around this way and around this way. 
you can think of the affine line with coordinate y in a similar way. y equals 0 in the middle. And as you go off to infinity, you go either this way to plus infinity and this way to minus infinity. And what this identification does is you look at the place where x doesn't equal 0. So you exclude this point here and you just look at the rest of it. And you identify that with this bit here. And of course, as you can see, once you glue them together like that, the projective line over the reals just looks like a circle topologically. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.